Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy rodriguez Shomont. As you can see, I have a different background right now. I am not at home. I am actually up in Orlando at a conference. So I wanted to jump in. I'm doing this off my cell phone as I actually forgot my computer at home. I thought it was in my bag. I have a couple of them, and I just forgot it. So, yeah, it's a bit of a headache. Nonetheless... Cheryl Swoops is at it again. I saw this video of Gills Arena last night, but I've been working all day, so I had to jump on here. I see other people have already dropped a video on this stuff with their commentary. I wanted to do this first thing in the morning, but I had a ton of things to do today. You've got to be kidding me here. This is absolutely out of control. Gills Arena, if it's not for Rashad McCants, that show, that pod has absolutely no credibility whatsoever. To listen to Cheryl Swoops and then listen to Gilbert Arenas with his mimic of Cheryl Swoops' nonsensical, nonsensical commentary, it is so tiring. See, Cheryl Swoops wants to come across and sit here and tell you, oh, I think Caitlin Clark's a very good player, blah, 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 blah. Oh, but she's not dominant. She's not dominating. What the hell are you watching? Like, what are you watching? You can't even take this crap seriously anymore. I mean, you can't take it seriously to begin with because uh, because she will dumb her own career down to shit on Caitlin Clark. She will dumb her career down to shit on Caitlin Clark. So her three MVP seasons for which Caitlin Clark this season is having a better year than are not dominant seasons, according to Cheryl Soups, because she wants to diminish Caitlin Clark. It's absolutely crazy. And then hearing the rhetoric with Gilbert Arenas and his commentary about how, well, the, the, the bar is set at 32 points and nine assists because that's what she did in college. What? Since when is the barometer and the bar set on your college career? There has not been a score, a player in the history of the WNBA to average 30 points a game. But yet you want to set her barometer and her bar at 32 points per game? See, that's just downright stupid. Because if you really want to be genuine about it, you look at the fact that she only took, I don't know, 12 and a half shots per game. I'm sorry, I'm moving around. Here, I got my son here with me, actually. <laughs> 12 and a half shots per game. Like, how can you even compare the two things? And I apologize for moving the camera because I'm just, I'm moving around a little bit. But but when she was averaging 12 and a half shots in the first half of the season, she's averaging 17 a game. You're comparing an apple to an orange. If she's taking 21 shots a game, damn right, she probably could average 30, 30 a game. But she's not taking that many shots. That doesn't mean she's not dominating the game. She is actually the most dominant player in the game right now including more dominant than Asia Wilson. More dominant than Asia Wilson. What are we talking about here? She produces more points than anyone in the league. She's produced 278 points, I think I was what I counted. 278 more than Asia Wilson this year between points and assists. That's dominant. She is the most dominant player in the league. She's absolutely the most dominant guard in the league. So when I hear this, this, this nonsense, she's not dominating. What the? What is your definition of it? So for her, she has to average 32 and 10 to be dominating? Like, like this, this, this is all semantics. This is just coming up with a new definition to benefit yourself and benefit your stance on this nonsense. It's absolutely crazy to listen to this type of crap from Cheryl Swoops and then listen to Gilbert Arenas, who should know a little basketball, co-sign this crap. It's crazy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Asia Wilson was the rookie of the year when she was a rookie. Asia Wilson was the rookie of the year, and she averaged 20 points and 20.7 and I think nine, eight, nine boards a game. You wouldn't call that a dominating season as a rookie? Heck, forget being a rookie. It's a dominating season, period. But right now, we are watching Caitlin Clark set and break all kinds of records. Set the record for... 
She sets the record for assists. She's broken the record. I mean, she's set the record right now for three-pointers. She's setting records every single day. She's got two triple-doubles. She's got, I don't know, 14 double-doubles. Most double-doubles in the history of the season for a guard, I think, is what I saw. Set the WNBA record for assists in a game. Record after record after record. What do you need to do for these individuals who clearly just dislike you because they dislike you? Look, I get it. There are issues that Caitlin Clark has. She has to stop complaining about every single time she gets breathed on. And I've said that myself. I'm sick of seeing that nonsense. But to sit here and say she's not dominating the game is absolutely nuts. 19, 5, 8, 4, and 5, 6 per game, something like that. Oh, no, we'll mention the turnovers. Uh, I, you know, whatever. Rashad McCants is the only one that can hold these two idiots in check. It's painful. Now, I don't agree that Angel Reese is dominating the game. She's dominating in rebounding. And, they, and then Gilbert Arena says, well, this is the floor. I disagree. I don't think Angel Reese will be, ever be much of an offensive threat. And, yes, I think this is the floor for Caitlin Clark because I just think she's a much better player. Like, this is not even a conversation as to who's a better player. It's become – it's one of those things where – Excuse me, it's a little bit hot out here. It's one of those things where they will come up with anything to 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 discredit this young woman. I, 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 there's no words anymore. There are no words anymore for how outrageous the rhetoric is and creating a new standard and barometer for what the definition of dominating is. She's doing something that's never fucking been done in the history of the WNBA. 15, five and five, never been done. And she's been on that pace since the first 10 games of the season. So for anyone else that's dominating, for her it's not. And you know what's funny is when you hear Cheryl Swoops talk about, she brings up the fact that Caitlin Clark shot and scored 35 points in a game in her career high is 34. She hears it. She knows it. And the fact that she brings it up shows you and proves that it bothers her. It absolutely bothers her that that – Caitlin Clark is busting her ass. So that's why she then will say stuff like, well, my seasons weren't dominating. Well, you were the MVP. And then they compare her to Candace Parker. They'll make comp- comparisons to something like that. Newsflash. Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark is having a better season this year than Candace Parker did her rookie year, in which she won rookie of the year and MVP. And if you want to be completely honest about Candace Parker's rookie season, she joined a bad team that added two players that played alongside her, which is why the Sparks became a much better team in one season. Lisa Leslie did not play the year before. Delisha Milton-Jones did not play the year before. They both played in, in Candace Parker's rookie year, and that is the main reason why the Los Angeles Sparks became so much better, because if Candace Parker had played by herself and not with those two, the Sparks would have stunk. The only difference to the Indiana Fever this season is Caitlin Clark. It's not Aaliyah Boston. It's not Kelsey Mitchell. Kelsey Mitchell's been there for seven years on trash can teams. She couldn't get it done. She's a great piece to the puzzle. But the board is Caitlin Clark. The, the engine is Caitlin Clark. Kelsey Mitchell's never seen this type of success until she played with Caitlin Clark and accepted the role that she's accepted. And she looks great doing it. She's playing great doing it. But this need to go out of the way, as Cheryl Swoops does, where she says, well, Kelsey Mitchell. We know Kelsey Mitchell's playing great. Go look at her last six seasons. 18 points, four rebounds, or something like that. That's pretty much her career. That's her career. That's not changed. And her teams were awful. The second half of this season... She's been otherworldly because she accepted the role that she needed to accept. And she's been dominating in that role as you got to put that ball in the hole. She's doing a great job of it. But this team, this team is one player different from last year. And that player is Caitlin Clark. And if you don't like it, that's your problem. But to make up shit and say, oh, she's not dominating because, oh, well, she didn't. She didn't score 32 a game. 
Who the fuck expected her to score 32 points a game as a rookie? Who? Who exactly? The fact of the matter is, she's. I did. I did think she could score 25 a game. I really did. Genuinely, I did think that because I thought she'd take more shots, but she's not taking more shots. And you know what's funny is when that when Rashad McCants, Gilbert Arenas uses this terminology and says, "Well, what do you know her for? What's her best quality?" And 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 McCants says, "Passing the ball." And Gilbert says, "No, it's scoring." No, Gilbert. You're not paying attention, my guy. She's led the country in assists in the NCAA for three straight years. And what did she do in the WNBA? She's leading the WNBA in assists as a rookie and breaking all, all the records. Her best asset is her floor vision and her passing. It's not even close. And all these things that you talk about, about dominant, she's doing them while being double teamed more than anybody in the history of the WNBA, being blitzed at midcourt, being guarded 75 feet from the rim. They don't want the ball in her hands. The game plan is made to stop her. How often are you double teaming Asia Wilson 17 feet from the rim? Never. You want her to take that shot. While Caitlin Clark gets dominated at getting up dominant, sorry, gets double team 26 feet from the basket. It's a joke. It's an absolute freaking joke listening to this shit from these two individuals. I'm so tired of it. And I, I'm not able to link all the video and go over it one by one because I'm actually here in a hotel right now. And I did leave my computer, but I'm doing it on my phone because I am absolutely sick and tired of listening to this utter nonsense. Every single week, there's something new. What's dummy? She's going to be first team all WNBA. She'll be second, maybe third in MVP voting. Would you say Nafisa Collier's had a dominant year? Fuck yeah. Would you say Asia Wilson's had a dominant year? Fuck yeah. Would you say Kaylin Clark has had a dominant year? Goddamn right. If you're a first team all WNBA player, a first team all NBA player, you're a dominant player. Scrubs don't get in those teams. Average Joes, good players, very good players, don't make first team all WNBA or all NBA or first team anything. But if, if it's Caitlin Clark and it's Cheryl Swoops talking, then yeah, you're just having a really good season. If it's Gilbert Arenas, oh, you didn't average 32, so you haven't reached what the, the bar you set in college. Man, please. Man, child, please. But that's what you get when you're Caitlin Clark and they all don't like you because you just happen to be the white girl who's better than Cheryl Swoops. And don't get me started with what the nonsense about the Cappy Ponda was the Cappy Pondexter said about an, a part owner of the Atlanta Dream says about Caitlin Clark. I'm gonna have some more videos when I get home on Friday, but I wanted to jump on in this one today because I had to get this out there because it's hot. And, and I was just losing my mind watching this Gilbert Arenas video last night. But anyhow, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, as it's just getting darker and darker as I sit here in Orlando, Florida. But uh, thank you all so much for your continued support of our channel. Please do so like, subscribe, and follow, and ring that bell. Click the bell so you get all updates and notifications. All right? Thank you again. Come on now.